Welcome everyone. Um, next up we have Igor with securing web with Apache. Take it away, Igor. Thanks a lot. Woo. Thanks a lot, Justin. Um, Hello and welcome to my uh, little talk about security and SSL. Usually someone qualified does this kind of talk, but uh, I thought I'd just um, dip in and find out how SSL works myself and present it to other people who are curious. Um, okay, so this is securing the web with SSL. We'll find out what the uh, irony behind this is, I hope, during the talk and how we can fix it to be actually secure. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Igor, and my last name is pronounced Galich, just in case anyone is interested. You can find me on the internet. Um, I'm JMCG on, uh, on IRC and Hirojin on Twitter, because I, I didn't sign up early enough to get the same thing everywhere. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing a hat because of the lights and because it's cold in here, not because of fashion, by the way. Not entirely because of fashion. Um, okay, quick overview. We'll take a look at what SSL is uh, and how it works. Um, we'll try to assess from that how, um, what's wrong with it and uh, we'll try to take a look at how to get it right, and maybe uh, we can spark a little bit of a discussion of how to get it all a little bit right. Uh, so let's, right, uh, let's dive right into it. SSL is one of those nice technologies from the 90s. Uh, it was invented by Netscape. Other uh, inventions from Netscape in the 90s include JavaScript. I'm just putting this in parallel for those of you who know JavaScript <clears throat> and its legacy. Um, it wasn't until uh, 1999 that the IETF took over and made it an actual standard. So up to the, this point, it was uh, really just Netscape's thing, you know, and everybody was using it because there was nothing else out there. Um, but since 1999, it's actually called TLS. Um, so from now on, I'm going to try say TLS. And every time I say SSL, I probably mean TLS unless I qualify it by a version. Um, 19, uh, sorry, uh, 2008, we had a, uh, since 2008, we are at version 1.2, which is um, pretty nice. And since 2011, we've got my favorite addition uh, to the RFC, which is 6172. It uh, deprecates SSL version 2. You can no longer revert back to version 2 if you are on TLS 1.2 and you have this implementation. So this is a step forward. Now, uh, so what is TLS? TLS uh, is a so-called secure protocol. And as a secure protocol, it needs to um, implement a set uh, of, it needs to have a set of certain uh, properties to fulfill that role, to fulfill that name. And um, those properties are uh, confidentiality, which is what most of us think when we think uh, security protocol, which is the encryption part. It needs to have integrity, um, and since TLS means transport layer security and is usually layered on top of TCP, and uh, TCP already guarantees that sort of thing, we'd also like to have it in TLS. So we really want to make sure that what, uh, what we send is what arrives. It needs to have authenticity, and this is something that will uh, go in much uh, detail. Uh, authenticity basically just says, okay, I know who I am talking to. And it needs to have non-repudiation, which is um, 
the originator of a communication is uh, cannot be uh, must not be able to later say, okay, I didn't, I didn't say that, I didn't do that. It's basically like you sign a contract and later say, no, I don't, I don't own you a hundred thousand um, dollars. Other nice things would be availability. So people who uh, are supposed to have access uh, to a secure site can have access to it. And access control, um, which uh, those who are not supposed to have access to it don't. Um, but some of these concepts are munched together, uh, like access control and non-repudiation are usually uh, tied around authenticity. So that's, that's what we would like to have. TLS is actually quite, uh, quite a simple protocol or uh, a simple set of ideas. We have, uh, on top we have those services that we, we just discussed. I mean, they're sort of implemented like services. And uh, below that we have um, certain mechanisms like uh, signatures, encryption, and hashing. So uh, for instance, confidentiality is guaranteed by encryption and integrity by hashing and, uh, whoops, da, da, da. did I forget anything? Signatures, yeah. And underneath, we have this, um, the algorithms that those are implemented in. And I just see that those are a little bit outdated. So RSA, uh, I mean, MD5, I hope nobody uses MD5 these days anymore. In fact, it's actually uh, in, uh, in the modern versions of TLS, it's probably pretty much deprecated. Okay, so we see that it's really, really simple uh, basic ideas and they're layered like a cake and um, to see further how this works out, let's uh, take a look at the handshake. This looks pretty big. Oh, it's actually bigger on this screen than on mine here. Can make it a little bit bigger, I think. Whoa. <laughs> oh, da -da. Daniel, how do I? Minus? Oh, it's a little bit. Oh, yeah, we can navigate around that. Uh, this is a graphics I took from Wikipedia. I had to fix it up and contribute back to it. Uh, I hope it's right now. So this is the uh, TLS handshake. It's, uh, it's, it's a full handshake if both sides are um, if both sides are, uh, are secured by a certificate, uh, so if, uh, the client and the server is authenticated. Um, but we'll just rush through uh, the simple version so that you see that it's actually, in principle, quite simple. Okay, so when a client connects to a server, the client generates a random number and it sends this random number in a uh, TLS client hello together with some uh, basic information like these are the sets of uh, um, cipher suits and hashes and signatures that I like and here's a random number and it sends that off to, to the server and the server in turn uh, generates a random number of its own and sends the server hello back to the client and it chooses uh, from, uh, from those hashes and signatures and other algorithms that the client has sent to the server and that it supports itself and it's supposed to choose the best of the breed that both support. And again, it uh, generates a big random number and sends that uh, to the client. So now we have uh, on both sides uh, those random numbers. Uh, the server also uh, sends its certificate and uh, the client then is supposed to check for that. Da, 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 da. Let's go through this. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, then we use those uh, random numbers and generate from that a uh, pre, it's called pre uh, PMS, pre master secret. Um, this is the key that we, th this is going to be the, a big random number that we will use uh, to communicate our initial, uh, initialization of the encryption. And uh, the basic idea here is that we use asynchronous, um, asynchronous en encryption in order to secure, uh, to securely communicate uh, the encryption key that we will be using. And once we have that done, and once we have a master secret, once we have communicated the, um, uh, the key that we want to use for encryption, uh, the client says, okay, now I'm gonna start uh, using this en uh, encryption and then it sends the finish message encrypted with that uh, master key that we, have, um, that we have communicated. And if the server is able to encrypt that, the handshake from the client side was successful. And then the server does the same thing. It says, okay, I'm finished from my side as well. It encrypts the finish message uh, with the master secret and if the client is able to decrypt that, the handshake is now complete and we can continue uh, to use uh, only this master secret uh, as, um, uh, as an encryption key. And whenever we decide, okay, now, uh, now it's time to change this master, master secret because I don't know, maybe we're paranoid or somebody uh, is, is trying to, is really trying to get us, um, we can uh, run through this whole process and change this key uh, to keep, uh, to make sure that the line is still secure. And it, yeah, it's basically just a, renego a renegotiation uh, of, of the key. It's just like another handshake. So, I hope I've, I've managed to convey that the basic principle uh, of, of TLS is actually quite simple. We have some uh, mass, we have big random numbers, um, and by doing the, the appropriate steps in the appropriate order, um, we establish a secure channel. So the question is how does TLS fail then? What's, what's wrong? Why do I think something is wrong? And uh, the answer is, uh, this is a short overview of this little step here. I hope you can see that. This is my mouse pointer saying check server certificate. And this is how that works. So uh, check server certificate uh, goes like this. First of all, uh, we have to match the host name. So if, we're, uh, if I'm connecting to twitter.com, I have to check that whatever is in the server certificate actually says twitter.com. And uh, this is actually where many libraries already fail. There's a, a white paper on that. Uh, I link to all my material, material in the last slide. I'm gonna have a, that glass of water. Okay, so once we've got that done, um, we validate the dates. That is, uh, a SSL certificate usually has a um, not, uh, not before and not after, which is like a best before date on milk. We want to make sure that, um, that we were within this range, otherwise we reject. And uh, next, and this is also crucial, and this is also where many libraries or many um, many programmers unfortunately fail, uh, we make sure that the certificate is not self-signed. Um, I'll, I'll try to explain why this is uh, important in a bit. So the, the, uh, if the certificate is self-signed, we reject it. And then we check if it's revoked or not. And there's two ways to do this. And uh, again, most libraries and most frameworks don't do that. Um, yeah, and then we come to the complicated bit, which is validating the chain of trust. And 
the way to do this is we get uh, fr from the current certificate that we are uh, working on, we get the issuer and then we get the next certificate in the chain. So if there is no next certificate in the chain, that's again a reason to reject it because the chain is incomplete. Uh, and then uh, if there is a next certificate, we uh, make sure that the issuer of the previous certificate matches the subject uh, of this next certificate so that they're correctly signed. If that's okay, we can continue to do the same sort of uh, validation as we did before. We check dates, we check if it's uh, revoked, and then we check if this is a self-signed certificate. Because if it's a self-signed certificate, that, uh, that means it's the end of a chain. And uh, if it's the end of, of the chain, that means it's, it's, sort of, it's the root certificate. Um, so we check if this root certificate is in our trust store. And if it isn't, again, we reject it and we reject the whole chain because we don't trust it. But if it is in our trust store, uh, we say, okay, now this, we, we've successfully validated the path and we trust this site. And this, this whole thing, this is how SSL, how TLS uh, creates authenticity, how we ensure that I am talking uh, to, that I know who I'm talking to and that I trust who I'm talking to. So again, what's wrong with TLS? Uh, this is a, a beautiful graphics. It's, it's put together by, um, by SSL Labs, which is um, a research group. They created things like um, mod security and uh, they're working on Iron B, which is something like mod security for uh, multiple different application servers and uh, proxies. And they put together this um, SSL threat model. I, uh, I took it apart. We'll see it in the next couple of slides. But this is uh, all the kinds of things that, uh, that they could think of to attack SSL or TLS. So uh, there's, there's a certain number of things that we, uh, that we cannot protect with TLS, simply because it, no one thought of, of it in its conception and no one, uh, or, or it's just not in the scope of the protocol. So you could consider this a weakness or uh, you could move on and just not, not use it for that. Um, but most, uh, most weaknesses of the protocol itself, most, uh, most of them have been weeded out, I would say, in the last couple of years. So attacks against the protocol are actually a good thing. Uh, uh, whenever somebody tries to break TLS, break its encryption, uh, it, it rises from the ashes if you want as a better protocol. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the things that we cannot really cover aren't so much on the protocol side. They're on other sides. They're on the client side. Uh, it's, um, it's difficult to, uh, to convey to people that uh, security is not just a padlock icon on, on a site. And many people just don't care. I mean, I, I was uh, at the airport. I spent lots of times uh, on airports, and this time, I, um, they had uh, iPads on JFK, and I typed in a site, and it gave me a validation error. And I mean, I, it could have been that I was a little bit overtired and oversensitive, but the lady next to me was typing her uh, credit card info in that terminal, and I told her, I, I wouldn't do that, and she just said, I don't care. So. <laughs> I think it's, um, it's, uh, it's a different kind of mentality. Most of us who, uh, who are in technology, who are uh, security sensitive, uh, we know uh, what to look out for. But uh, uh, with, with browsers over the last couple of years, we've trained people just not to care. And, 
and I'm quite happy to see that uh, this uh, this is being reverted slowly, but uh, it's being reverted. Like back in the day, it used to be that uh, you go to a site and it displays all those pet icons and tell, tells you, yay, this is secure. And now it's uh, a lot subtler. But when something is wrong, you get this red screen in Chrome or Firefox and it tells you, do not pass. And uh, you need to click three or four times just to go to the site. So this, uh, this trend is reversing. We're, uh, um, we're training people, uh, users, slowly to, to be more sensitive to this. But as, as admins and um, developers, we, th there's a number of issues that we can run into that we see here. And most of them, yeah, it's, it's configuration issues. We, or, or simply neglect, yeah. Uh, I spent the morning updating servers because uh, there's a security bulletin, GNU TLS vulnerability, and lots of my Ubuntu systems use GNU TLS communicate between each other. So uh, yeah, that's, that's how my day started. Um, but yeah, many people don't care. We run Rahel 4 in production, and that has a SSL version that's beyond repair and imagination. I, I, I don't even want to know. So um, these are, uh, I mean, uh, this is the key. Um, how do you say it? Um, the key requirement of an operations team to keep the environment secure. And yeah, sometimes we just don't care. We don't. We don't do it. I'm not sure how to fix that. But there's other things that. Uh, whoop. Whoa. That's that's interesting behavior. Uh, there's other things that we can fix or that I can fix. I can teach you how to properly create certificates, how to put them uh, into your server, and how to make sure that the uh, chain is valid, that uh, the basic things are there. But yeah, we, we still have to keep up to date on, uh, on security bulletins. We have to make sure that the ciphers that we use, that we configure, that they're not weak. So yeah, the only thing that we can do here is really keep up to date. Subscribe to security mailing lists of your OS, maybe even to, uh, to those of OpenSSL and uh, other libraries that you use. And uh, yeah, just, just keep up to date. That's uh, all I can say. OK, so the thing is, uh, oops, if, if we look back, this is uh, the, the issues that we can have on the server side. Um, but uh, as you can imagine, if a uh, PKI or CA, they have the same issues and then some more. Uh, I like how this says uh, bribery, but really, if, uh, uh, if a CA goes bankrupt, it's being sold to the, uh, to the highest bidder. So not even necessary to bribe them, just buy them. And um, we, see, we see other things. I mean, many, uh, many countries, many governments that you might not trust have ACA. So they could put up a intercepting proxy uh, and just encrypt and decrypt every traffic that comes into the country just like some companies do with intercepting proxies. Uh, I, think, uh, I think we've been discussing this uh, to add this as a feature to traffic server. Uh, yeah, we should keep you updated on that. Um, there's also been a couple of um, bugs with implementations of CA software um, where you could just put in uh, backslash null into a name, and you call it, I don't know, www.google.com backslash null, and then esotericsystems.at, which is my address. Cool, I can buy a certificate like that. It's completely valid, and um, put it on a server and get your mail traffic. So, this is how uh, X509 works in theory, and um, 
this is what many of us do in companies. If you run Puppet, this is what happens. For instance, you create, you create a Puppet master, it creates a CA. Every single of your servers has their own certificate. So this, uh, this is just what uh, many of us have. We, we do that, we implement that. But it's a really small environment. I mean, I have, what do I have? Like in my own environment, I have 16 servers. For, uh, companies I consult for have uh, 500 plus servers per data center. So it's uh, really easy to overlook. Uh, if, but I've worked in bigger companies where we, um, where we tried to issue certificates to every mobile device, to every laptop. And that really gets nasty. It, you, uh, you lose the oversight, and it's really easy to steal that, compromise it, and suddenly you're in the network, and you, uh, you're allowed in. So if this is hard to overlook, what's the difference if on top it's not my company, but it's uh, VeriSign or some other uh, CA? And down below, you have millions and millions of sites. It's really uh, uh, hard to do this kind of concept on a big scale if trust uh, is, is not, um, if every one of, uh, of the CAs is trusted 100%, and 100% for each site. So, if, uh, so yeah, every one of these CAs. I hope this will open, whoa, yeah. This is, uh, this is a picture by, uh, by the uh, EFF SSL observ Observatory. And it shows you everything that you have in your trust store. And if we zoom in, we see, uh, I know we see China somewhere, we see uh, certain companies, certain countries that have CAs, and the question is, do you really trust all these people 100% to, uh, to guarantee the security of the internet? And I mean, in my case, I, I don't really do that. But still, yeah, we, we use browsers and other facilities. Oop. How do I get rid of this, Daniel? That was a little bit too much, right? Awesome. If I open this, what will happen? Oh. Cool. <laughs> okay. So this, this I think, uh, shows us how how SSL is um, in its basis. It's a very nice protocol. It's good to have, and we don't really have something else. But X509 is uh, makes it really difficult to really guarantee uh, this this kind of authenticity that a secure protocol is supposed to give. So what I would like to show, and I hope I have the time. Justin, uh, is how you can drop out of this system, how you can drop out of this 605, 650-plus uh, something tr completely trusted uh, root CAs. And th the answer is simply by doing, yeah, something like this. You create your own uh, root CA. And if you're writing, for instance, um, a, um, a mobile application, that's, that's probably your best shot to guarantee that whoever you're talking to is really who you are talking to. Because you can uh, distribute this tiny uh, little um, CA, this one CA, this root CA, with your application, and it's going to uh, really make sure that uh, the servers that your servers that you are talking to are really your servers. So um, dropping out of this system uh, makes, it, uh, makes it easier to use it in, uh, in a sensible way, you know, if you just use simple, small aspects of it. So 
Uh, now let me show you how to do that, I hope. We can increase the font size. Font size. Okay, so uh, I have all this uh, material actually in my. Um, In my, uh, in my slides, it's all in there, all the stuff that I used. I'm going to show you real quick how to do this. So I'm a big fan of make. So I prepared a make file. Um, so what you want to do is you create a root, uh, root CA, and then you create an issuing CA like I had uh, in the slides. And this then you use uh, to certify your servers. And you put that root CA on, uh, onto, your, onto your mobile devices in your web app and other things. You can uh, do, uh, I use OpenSSL, and you can use OpenSSL as a nice basis, and uh, from there work your way uh, with others. OpenSSL is mostly well documented. Um, but uh, it, every couple of years it introduces uh, a new set of commands that, uh, and deprecates an old one. So here, uh, in, uh, in here I'm showing you how to create your root CA, which is you need a key and this key can either be RSA or DSA, whatever you prefer. And uh, then you create a self-signed certificate by creating a request and sign that request at the same time. Uh, then we want the issuing CA. And uh, this is really, I mean, it's a minor detail, but uh, you just create a sort of uh, hierarchy here uh, to to be more agile. So you could say, okay, I want an issuing CA for servers and one from clients and stuff like that. And with this issuing CA, you then sign this, uh, the single ser server certificates. Which we do also here in this make file. And uh, finally, like I said, if you're working with, um, with Java, Java has key tool. Key tool is extremely powerful and uh, has a more, I think, a more consistent user interface as opposed to OpenSSL. So you can um, do nice and fancy stuff, but uh, the simplest thing that you can do is simply import your root CA into a store and put that onto your web app. So let's just create. An issuing CA, here we see we're creating a uh, certificate, uh, a key. Then we are creating here, whoops, here a request. This request has esoteric systems issuing authority, um, UTF-8. I like that because my name doesn't fit in Latin one. And then we sign it with our root CA. And again, now you only have one uh, root CA in your store. And this, this is how you make sure that your uh, applications are secure and not in the CA uh, system. That's one way to do it. Uh, smarter people are working on other systems. Uh, the Chrome people have, um, I mean, they, they simply uh, pin the certificates so they know exactly, okay, we have a hash, uh, and it's hard-coded in, in the app. You can't always do that. Um, then there is this um, project that's called Convergence.io, 
which is yet another way uh, to drop out of the CA system that I uh, will not present because we're running out of time if I get that right. So question time. Excellent, no questions, lunch time. <laughs> hmm? Questions, anyone? If not, I'm sending you off to lunch. You can uh, find my slides online or where do we find my slides? I, I, I thought, yeah, at some point, well, I can, I can put them online as well. Let's see. Do I have them in my links here? No, I don't. Uh, should I put them there? Uh, Presents TLS slash index HTML. That will be it. That's where they should turn up in a minute. Uh, let's see if we can create a shorter link version of that. Okay. No, okay. 